Okay, today and uh, today and tomorrow both uh, we'll be working with parallelograms. Um, again, the definition of a parallelogram is just that uh, opposite sides are parallel to each other. So with each of these shapes, we're going to know that um, the sides that are across from each other are going to be parallel. So on the first shape that we have on the top right, um, you can put a single arrow through the top and bottom, and then two arrows through the left and the right to say that those are uh, opposite sides are parallel to each other. Um, so the properties that we have with parallelograms is we always know that um, our opposite sides are going to be equal to each other. So in that same picture, we can go ahead and put a single line through the top and the bottom, and then double lines through the left and the right, opposite sides are equal to each other. Uh, the next thing that we know is since we have parallel lines, we know that we've got um, same side interior angles. So, um, so consecutive angles are going to be supplementary. That's going to be angles that are next to each other. So um, with this one, I would say that um, like angle A and angle D are supplementary to each other. So I could say angle A plus angle uh, D is equal to 180. Oops. Um, a and B would be equal to 180 because they're consecutive angles. Um, angle B and angle C are equal to 180. Again, they are same side interior angles. Um, and then angle C and angle D are also going to be equal to 180. They're consecutive angles on the top, um, so they'll be supplementary to each other, or equal to 180. Um, and because of that, we end up knowing the next two uh, properties. Uh, we know our opposite angles are always equal to each other. So I know that in this one, that angle A and angle C, again, they're angles that are across from each other. They're going to be equal to each other. And then also angle B and angle D will be um, equal to each other as well. They'll be equal. Um, opposite angles, angles that are across from each other, not consecutive, not next to each other, will be equal. And then the last one is that the diagonals bisect each other. Um, so if you draw on your parallelogram the diagonals uh, AC and uh, AC and BD, um, you're going to know that um, both diagonals are going to be cut in half by each other. So if I named uh, the midpoint M, um, I could say that uh, DM is equal to MB and AM is equal to MC. Those are the kind of two things that we have there that we can write. Um, so with the rest of the problems, we can go ahead and write equations and solve um, to figure out what our variables are and figure out what angles are. Uh, with the first problem on the bottom left, um, first, I think the easiest one to take care of is uh, 6a plus 10 is this top. Um, 8a minus 4 is the bottom. So I know those opposite sides are going to be equal to each other. So I can go 8a minus 4 is equal to 6a plus 10. So I can subtract the 6 over to the other side. Get 2a minus 4 is equal to 10. Add the 4 to get 2a is equal to 14. And so I know that a is equal to 7. Um, again, I'm going to plug it back in to find. So uh, I know they're both going to be the same. So if I plug the A back in, A is 7 into the top, I get 42 plus 10, which is 52. So I know that the bottom is 52 as well. Um, then I'm given these two angles. Uh, these are consecutive angles, so I know they have to be supplementary. So I can write an equation again. I can go uh, 18B minus 11 plus 9B plus 2 is equal to 180. Combine my b's together, combine my numbers together to get, oops, 27b uh, minus 9 is equal to 180. Uh, I can add the 9 to the other side to get 27b is equal to 189. And then divide both sides by 27. So 189 divided by 27 gives me 7. So b is equal to 7 as well. Again, I can plug those back in. Um, so if I go 9 times 7 plus 2, you know, this angle right here is going to be 65. Um, and then know that they're supplementary. So 180 minus 65 gives me 115 here. With the second one, again, just 
I know that uh, X and 80 are consecutive angles, so I know they're going to add up to equal 180. Detention and extended school will be in room B134 today. Detention and extended school will be in room B134. Thank you. So I know that X has to be equal to 100. Um, I know that the opposite angles have to be equal, so this is 100 and 100 and 80 and 80. Okay. Flip over to the back. On the back, um, these are all A's, so I can just find the easiest one. The top and the bottom probably is going to be the easiest. So I can go A minus 3.5 is equal to 18.5. Add the 3.5 to the other side to get A is equal to uh, 22. 22. Again, um, I know that the top is going to be 18.5 as well. Um, this is if A is 22, then I know the right-hand side. If I do 22 plus 1.6, I get 23.6. Three point six. Always double check yourself by plugging into all of them to make sure you're getting the same answers on top and bottom and left and right. And the last one I've got, or sorry, the last one on the top, I've got um, these two angles. They're opposite angles, so I know they're going to be equal to each other. So I can go 6a plus 10 is equal to 130. Get 6a is equal to 120 by subtracting the 10 to the other side. Divide by 6, and I get a is equal to 20. Again, plug it back in, you know that these are 130, um, and then you know that these other two angles are going to be 50. Last two are where uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, it's going to be remembering a little bit of Algebra 1. Um, so with the last two, oops, with the last two, um, again, I know that my, in my parallelogram, my, um, my diagonals are going to bisect each other, they're going to cut each other in half. So I know that these two are equal, and these two are equal. So the two equations that I can write are going to be x is equal to y plus 2. And then the other one is y plus 10 is equal to 2x minus 8. And so in both of my equations, I don't have a way of solving because I have two variables. Um, but I know that x and y, like both these equations, have to happen at the same time. So what I can do is I can use something called substitution, use the systems of equations like you did last year. So with substitution, um, I want to get a variable by itself. In both these cases on the bottom, um, I have a variable already by itself, so I'm going to put parentheses around the other side. So x is equal to y plus 2 means that wherever I see an x, I can replace it with y plus 2. So what I can actually do is I can grab this, and I can plug it in for x. So left-hand side stays y plus 10 is equal to 2, and then instead of writing the x, uh, I write parentheses uh, y plus 2. And then I still have my minus 8. Now I have one variable left, and so I can go ahead and distribute. So I get y plus 10 is equal to 2y plus 4 by distributing the 2, minus 8. Um, I can combine these guys together. Um, I can also subtract the y over here in the same step. To get 10 is equal to y oops, minus 8, and then add the 8 over to the other side. Whoops. Sorry. Add those together, and I get negative 4. There we go. Now, I can add the 4 over to the other side and get y is equal to 14. Um, and so again, it's not good enough just to figure out what 1 is. I would need to figure out what x is as well. So I can grab that and plug it back in. Um, plug the 14 in, so 14 plus 2 gives me 16. And so I know that x is equal to 16. Once I know what each of those are, um, I can, you know, figure out what each of these lengths are. So I know that um, LP is equal to uh, Pn. They're both the same. I know that they're both going to end up being um, Lp is here. So it's going to be the same thing as what x is. So I know that that'll be equal to 16. And then I know that the other two diagonals, so if I call it Kp and uh, Pm, 
Again, I can just take, uh, this is y plus 10, and so I can just add 10 to my y, which gives me 24. Whoops. Again, that's just by plugging it back in. Uh, I just plugged it back into one of the original equations for one of the pieces, and then knew that my diagonals bisected each other, so I knew that those were equal. Um, let's do the same thing. Again, substitution is a long time ago, so um, these two are equal and these two are equal. So I have y is equal to x plus 1, and then I've got uh, 2x is equal to 3y minus 7. And so again, I want to put this in parentheses. Um, you know, I've got y is equal to x plus 1, so wherever I see a y, I can replace it with an x plus 1. So I can go 2x is equal to 3 parentheses x plus 1, and then minus 7. Distribute the 3 to get 2x is equal to 3x plus 3 minus 7. Um, I can subtract. Eh, I don't want to do that. So when I do that, I get 2x is equal to 3x minus 4. Um, just be careful the way that you do this. Um, usually what we want to do is we want to subtract the 2x over to the other side. If you do that, that's fine, but you get 0 is equal to, make sure you remember that it's a 0, x minus 4. And so add the 4 to the other side to get 4 is equal to x, or x is equal to 4. Uh, once I'm there again, I can grab this 4 and plug it back in for x. So I know that y would be equal to 5. And again, if I wanted to just substitute it back in to figure out what each of the pieces of the diagonals are, um, I know that, uh, let's see, I know that PT is equal to TR. And so uh, 2 times x, so 2 times x would be 8. And then I can also find the other diagonal, which is ST and TQ. So ST is equal to TQ, uh, which is the same thing as Y, which is 5.